In this tour, I'm going to introduce you to the flat assembler. We're going to be done using the bug now. I think if you've been doing good at this, I think we've used the bug enough. We can start using an actual highly used assembler. So what you want to do, you want to go to assembler.net slash download.php, click assembler for Windows, and when your zip file loads up, you just want to extract it to your desktop. If you don't have WinRAR, either download WinRAR or just extract it with Windows built-in extraction tools, which aren't very good. Now it shouldn't take that long to extract to your desktop, but when you're it's done, just new folder, let's name it Phasm, and let's just move everything into this one folder. Now let's cut the folder and go to C oops C colon C colon backslash program files and let's paste that in. Now right there, now it's going to be right there in your program files and just click Phasm W and send to desktop. And that's a quick way to put Phasm on your computer or the flat assembler. This is what we're going to be programming with. Now let me rename it to just Phasm. And this is your flat assembler. It's much better than the bug. Now, when you open your flat assembler, you should see something like this. Now, when you want it, this assembler can do much more than the bug. Um, well, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, kind of. But if we write org, we have to write org 1000h in this case. This is when we want to create a com file. And what does the h mean? Well, you know how everything is hex and debug. Everything's not hex in almost in all other used assemblers, such as the flat assembler. Everything's not hex, but we can make it hex by putting an h after our number, such as 10. Or let's say, uh, yeah, 10. 10d, that's 10 decimal. 10d is actually equal to 10. But then 10 hex is not exactly equal to 10. If we go to like run Chrome, or just open up your web browser, whichever one you use, binary translator, go to this place. Like we did in another tutorial, home 2paulskewnet tools x -late. Now, once it loads, see if we type in into our hex 10. The hex 10 um, is actually equal to 16 in decimal. But decimals, what, what's good about decimals is they're um, the actual number. It's just 10 decimals actually equal to 10. But 10 hex isn't equal to 10, it's equal to 16. So, that's just one thing that's different, such as, remember everything would, you want to write org 1008 just at the top to tell you you're writing a com file. Now, mob ah, remember mob ah09? Well, we want to write mob ah09h. Because again, the H says it's hex, and since everything we use in the bug was hex, we just want to start putting H's after all our numbers. Although sometimes, remember, like when you wrote bytes to a file, um, we like had to use the binary translator. Say so we wanted to write ten, um, we had to look up in the binary translator. Translator, we had to write ten, hit decode, or we had to hit ten in decimals click decode and then see how much that was in hex which is 0a but we don't have to do that we can just write 10 decimals and that's 10 bytes so mob dx now how if, the, if this doesn't you know how you see you use like the a's like a100 and debug to like get positions and data and you know you like call position data to display a string well you don't have positions and data like that in the flat assembly and all other assemblers. So you may wonder, how do I work with positions and data? Well, you have something called labels. It's just the name. Let's say I write Bob Joe, and then you put a colon after him, and that's a label. This, 
Um, if you want to use the two fancy words again, it's a symbolic representation of position and data. So remember how we like said a 100 to go to 100 and data define bytes dog and like that and we define at the position data 100 dog. Well, this label here represents those position and data. It doesn't matter what it is, but it just we represented it, so that's good. So now we can do the same thing. Right, define bytes, hello world, and now up here we just write that that symbolic representation of the position of data, Bob Joe, in 21H and 20H, and now that does the same thing. In the, this is the hello world for here. Now we just write, let's say, hello, and now it'll it'll do that and it'll compile it, and now when we double click this. Hello world, and it goes away really quick. But then we can do this mob eight zero nine or zero eight h and twenty one h. Let's move our n twenty down here. See hello world, and let's me press the key. So again, the only difference in this is we're not, and this will compile it for. So remember that RCX data and stuff we wrote at the bottom. That's not, and also the a one hundreds and stuff. That's actually not part of the assembly language. That was part of the debug tool. But this will compile our file for us. So you don't have to write like RCX and write the file name and all that stuff. It, it, the assembler, the flat assembler will do that by itself. So our codes can be just simple as this. And then this one, you can also space it out as much as you want. Putting spaces won't mess anything up. And so here's Hello World and the flat assembly.